40 years ago, we opened our doors with one mission in mind. We'll be right back with the top 10 songs of 1983. To sell quality American-made vehicles at a fair price. You have arrived. And we've loved every minute of the ride. Celebrating 40 years of Two Rivers Ford. What's going on from the Superbook.com Sports Desk? I'm Robert Walsh. The Vols fall in Sweet 16. The Owls use a second-half push led by Michael Forrest to upset the fourth-seeded Tennessee Vols 62-55 to on Thursday night in the Sweet 16. Ninth-seeded FAU will play third-seeded Kansas State in the East Region Final at Madison Square Garden on Saturday. This is the Owls' first Elite Eight appearance uh other ncaa scores gonzaga beat ucla 79 76 arkansas fell to yukon 88 65 and kansas state beat michigan state in overtime 98 to 93 in the nfl the nfl sent out a memo to all clubs thursday notifying them that a person who is not certified by the nflpa might be attempting to persuade team personnel to enter into contract negotiations with baltimore ravens quarterback lamar jackson who received the non-exclusive franchise tag under league rules teams can only speak with jackson because he doesn't have an agent according to the memo obtained by espn's adam schefter the nflpa informed the league that ken francis who is not a certified agent with the player Union might be contacting teams regarding Jackson. Jackson denies this report. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 1045 The Zone. Friday morning edition, it is Ramon, Kayla, and Will, and it's powered by all four seasons garage doors. As the Tennessee Volunteers crash out of the NCAA tournament in the Sweet 16, we react to that with Jason Swain from Josh and Swain from Sports Animal w -W WNML in Knoxville. Jim Wyatt, TennesseeTitans.com at 920 this morning with Ramon Foster. Yay, yay. Robert Walsh, our producer this morning. Also, yay, yay. My name is Will Poling. <laughs> Kayla Anderson and Jonathan Schaefer on vacation today as Tennessee basketball's off season begins. Well, I wore something on purpose today. You did wear something on purpose today. What did you wear for the people listening today? <laughs> on to baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Ramon literally has a Tennessee baseball jersey on today. I got the pinstripe one on. By the way, I think they're still on sale right now. So oh, there, ah, there we go. Ah, from one to another, Will. You move on quickly. I do. What do they say? Quick uh, forgetful memory? Yeah, I can forget real quick on some stuff, Will. You know what else we say on this show? It's Friday and we're going to act And like we're going to. We're going to act like it. I just, just had to bang a small on the earthquake table. Right just there. happened it was right on the there. table. But 
Uh, Tennessee falls short. Florida Atlantic uh, with a big time second half performance and a big run, sixteen to two in the midway through the second half. Uh, wins this one, sixty two to fifty five, and uh, look, a team that was really good that we said all week was really good. Yep, outplayed Tennessee when it mattered, and ultimately Tennessee falls to a nine plus seed again in the NCAA tournament, albeit just a couple days later than they usually do. Ah, you know what though, Will? Sweet 16, I'll take it. Losing the way they did, it sucks, but I mean, Kansas State played lights out. Uh, no, FAU, sorry. FAU, FAU played lights out. Kansas State did too, well, though. Did okay, too. Yeah. Jeez, we'll get into them sure at some point. Uh, but FAU played lights out. So tell of two halves to me also. That's the way I break this game down, man. You couldn't script it any better for uh, FAU going into the second half, and we – uh, we crashed and burned. We were a uh, a Hollywood blockbuster, and then we turned into the Simply Blockbusters and not the uh, Master P ones, okay? So I, I don't know if Jonathan Schaefer is just like a Jedi mind guy to just perfectly plan his his day <laughs> off for the day after Tennessee season ends because typically he would be our psychiatrist today. Yeah. He would be the psychiatrist for the people of Nashville. Robert Walsh now assumes that duty, whether he likes it or not today, of being the psychiatrist of of much of Nashville, Tennessee. I, I don't know how many Tennessee fans are, uh, A, up this early listening to us because um, it, it was a late night watching that game. But, Robert, uh, should you choose to accept, you are now a part of a, a, a four-hour therapy session for, for many like us. Come lay down on my couch. <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and rip this Band-Aid off and just enjoy Tennessee's <laughs> one shining moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> he comes ready this morning. <laughs> yeah. This is the worst sports song of all time. Oh, it's by terrible. The way. Why is this it's a sports absolutely song? Absolutely terrible. This is the NCAA men's basketball anthem. Yeah, it's when, really bad. Whoever went. Don't you ever call this an yeah, anthem. You are. <laughs> this is the anthem. You for your life. <laughs> Sing it. A shoot Give it to him. <laughs> It, I, it really is. I, I could never hate on Luther, but also change it. Change it <laughs> yeah. now. We need something else. And I don't want them to go in the route of like uh, standing in the Hall of Fame <laughs> or something like that where they just beat us over the head with it. But Well, the, the song that CBS has been beating us over the head with is uh, The Weeknd. Uh, the Take My Breath. Oh, that's uh, right. Take My Breath. Yep. Like, what are we... This isn't the 2019-2020 <laughs> NFL playoffs. You don't have to keep playing the weekend at every single commercial yeah, break. I never knew that was his song we were listening to. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, that's, to keep that's up. crazy. No, I, I, I am trying to keep up. Like, geez. Uh, whew, they could have picked some other songs than that, but I guess when it's your turn, it's your turn for the NCAA tournament. So, question for you, Ramon. Yeah. With, with Kayla and Shafe not here today, Tuh. <laughs> are you glad that today of all days it's just us with – Tennessee diplomas. I am. Or do you? Okay. Please. I am. Don't even. You and me, no you and me rock together all, mm-hmm. at all hours at all times. You, you know, I look at this. You're talking about Bert being our therapist this morning for us and for the entire uh, right. uh, uh, nation of Nashville. You hear nation me? Of Nashville. Shout out to John Henderson for That's that right. drop right there. But I look at this as we get a green light. Okay. <laughs> we can we can create what kind of narrative, whatever narrative we want to about what the Vols did and didn't <laughs> do last night. Well, I told you. First thing that came to my mind when I got up this morning was a lot of stuff to come to my mind in the morning. But I was just like, you know what? Just bought a new jersey. <laughs> Dropped some LBs out here. You feel me? I can finally get into this jersey. And I you know what I said to myself? On to baseball. Flex on it. That's how you do that, Will. You feel me? Like, <laughs> and I saw the early tweets and late tweets last night coming at us trying to slander us. Will, I need you to do it for me one time because it's been a while. I've been trying to come up with it myself. I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's, hey, you feel here's me, what bro? happened. I'm not running from this, man. <laughs> here's what happened. What y'all want from us, Will? We do not care. Ramon, do did, not. We, did we or did we not give FAU credit all week? Yeah, we did. And say that they very easily could win this game. Mm-hmm. Essentially, 100%. the people that I trash talked yesterday were people who were blaming me for jinxing Tennessee for buying a refundable plane ticket for tomorrow morning. See, what I was doing was I was trash-talking children who don't understand (laughs) that the tooth fairy and and jinxes and this magical fairy dust that we can sprinkle in, oh, no, we're not going to go to the Elite Eight now because you said something. If if what I said 
had any effect on what Tennessee did. You think I would have figured that out by now, 25 and a half years into my life? You think the team that I support yeah. would have won more than two championships? Yeah. Anyway, I have to go on this rant every now and then because jinxes are for children. For yeah, little children. Yeah, yeah. Little children. So hey. anyway, if there are any little children that want to call in, 615-737-1045, I'll tell That's you you're an number. idiot to your face. But essentially what happened was people are getting that confused with us trash-talking FAU. That was something we did not do. Yeah, 100%. We trash-talk Kentucky. Do you want to do that right now then? Because <laughs> the owls are lame. No, trash-talk FAU. <laughs> they cheated. They were awful. They were flopping all over the place. <laughs> owls are lame. Let's be honest. They're only out at night. You leave your window open one night, and all you hear is, Whoa! Whoa! Ah, who? Who? You found out who. It's y'all. Enjoy your next round. Like, owls are kind of mean. I tell y'all I had an owl on my back porch a few weeks ago. No. You should have yeah. yeah. shot it. No, that would have been that would have been the jinx that, 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 that the vow that the balls needed. Has anyone ever eaten an owl? Yeah, the, the vowels is, is what I almost called it. <laughs> See, they could have ate them. They could have ate it and became the vowels. The color commentator last night did say the vowels. The vowels. That does happen. Yeah, from time it to does time. happen time to time. Like, uh, like Joe Hunk saying Gonzaga. Uh, yeah, that, I had it. The Zogs. <laughs> By the way, shout out Kayla asked for us to tell the Zags. Shout out to them last night, man. What a what a what a game winner. <laughs> but you know what? We paid that debt off, we and in, now we don't have to are anymore. We in Seattle, <laughs> what are we? <laughs> and now we don't this have Nashville, to this anymore. Is still Nashville. I was gone for a week, okay. I'm not sure what was said, but now I can say whatever the heck I want to. <laughs> Will you feel me? But with that being said, I did have an owl on my back porch, mind you too. I have never in my life ever seen an owl in the in the wild before, and really? I actually didn't see this when uh, my wife was Facetiming. I was coming back from Georgia. Uh, it was the night, it was before those storms. We had those bad storms like three weeks ago or whatever when that wind was cutting across. So, And then we had our door open for a little bit, back door. Woke up one morning, an owl is sitting on top of her camera on the back porch. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a baby one, though. Those things are like dive bomb you. What you mean? When you're like, <laughs> like that. When you're, uh, so when we would be out in trails in high school, like running in trails or just yeah. like being away, like. You were more scared of the owls than you were like snakes and stuff. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm dead serious. Owls? They literally there are stories of owls like dive bombing runners. Did you have teammates that were mice? I guess <laughs> that, 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 is that, is well, that what they were like? Yeah. Maybe in college a little bit. Okay, not well, as much that, in high school. That's, that's fair. Um, no, like legitimately, owls are kind of a mean animal. It's kind of like uh, geese. Oh no, like, geese like are mean as hell. When they walk up to you. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, some lady and yesterday. Say, I am, I, this is my tea box. Yeah, man. I, I ain't gonna let nothing with a neck like that talk any kind of mess to me. Come over here. I'll box you, man. Except like, Buck Rising. Yeah. Ten to one. Every day. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> that old turtle neck, so and so. That's the energy we come with today. But yeah, people. I mean, that's that's crazy. We, we get tweets about owls. I didn't realize they were like that. Well, like I I thought it's we a were terrible animal. Is it? I thought they were just like super chill. You can't hear no. them fly though. I do know that. That's true. Yeah, they they have like like soundless like movement is is how they go about stuff, and that's how they, they treated the Vols last night too. It was soundless movement. That is how they treated Tennessee on a sixteen two run <laughs> in the second half. Is. It is, but he left our back porch though. He pooped everywhere though too. Mm -hmm. yeah, did you ever bad. dissect those in in class? I did a frog. I never did anything. I don't else. think the owl. Pellets. I think we did dissect an owl. You I thought they were right freshman year. In high school. Who, real quick. Who? <laughs> Who? Real quick. Who? Who? What the hell was y'all high school budget? Because we couldn't afford no owls. <laughs> no, it wasn't a whole owl. It was like an owl pellet. It's like, just see oh, what I think the... we actually did an owl. No, oh. we did a cat. <laughs> oh, a cat. Wait a minute. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was some kind of class. mammal, bird, <laughs> reptile thing. <laughs> Biology <laughs> class for me was a blur. How the hell we only get a frog? And no, we just got the turd. I mean, we didn't get the whole owl. We just got the owl turd. Oh, uh, we had a we we did the frog, and then we did the egg vinegar acidic acidic thing, where like you put vinegar put an egg in vinegar, and the shell like oh, dissolves. dissolves. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You just way at it. that's yep. the only two things we did. How that's you, the only thing I paid attention in. We got a cat. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> they were like, all right, everybody gets a random animal. This is what we found on the side of the road this week. You get a possum, you get a raccoon, Will, you get a cat. Funny thing is, as many of my teachers who listen to this station, I'm sure my biology teacher might actually already be listening and could probably set the record straight. 
God. I have no idea. <laughs> Bert, what if it was a big rat? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, those are just the people tweeting at me. 645-737-1045 is the number this morning. Jason Swain at 820. Jim Wyatt at TennesseeTitans.com joining us at 920. And uh, we dive into the details last night of the one biggest reason why Florida Atlantic got another NCAA tournament win, this time over the Vols. And the stat that we gave you on Monday that reared its ugly head for Tennessee last night in Madison Square Garden. That's next. It's Ramon, Kayla, and Will, 104.5 The Zone. It's Ramon. It's Ramon for Spring Hill Heating and Cooling. Listen to me. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, they are the cooling company that can take care of all of your HVAC needs. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling is also a proud, rude pro partner and a Mitsubishi Diamond contractor. Listen to me. It's getting hot early this year. Vols fans, I know you're a little hot after last night, too, but I'm here to tell you, if you haven't already booked your spring tune-up for your AC unit, now's the time. Through the month of March, get your AC tuned-up for just $79 and get the full and get the fall tune-up for free. And if you were hot because of the game last night or just simply because you had to turn your AC unit on and you realized quickly it wasn't work like it should, don't wait until peak of summer to get a repair. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling offer free service costs with their repairs, plus low monthly payments on those repairs too and this is what they're going to offer you spring hill heating cool they're a family owned and operated company have been here for over 20 years and when they say family owned and operated they mean it from kevin opening the doors back to 2000 2011 while raising his family to now his daughters running the office his sons and son-in-laws are running the on-site technicians they are this this is a family member a, a phone call away i'm telling you you're going to get everything you're looking for and if you need a new unit so they got you covered get it done now and get 18 months of no payments that's right you buy a new unit today you won't have to pay for it until august of 2024 reach out to them at springhillac.com and be sure to tell them that ramon sent you
Friday morning edition of Ramon, Kayla, and Will, and it's powered by all four seasons garage doors. Jason Swain at 820 this morning talking UT and FAU. Jim Wyatt at 920, TennesseeTitans.com will address the NFL headlines and the Titans news over the last week. We take your phone calls at 615-737-1045 with Ramon Foster. I'm Will Bowling, Kayla Anderson, and Jonathan Schaefer. A very well-deserved day off. <clears throat> This morning, man, maybe well deserved for Kayla. Yeah, <laughs> we don't like him shave that much credit. That much credit, but I think he may have needed a day, about twenty four hours. Yeah, that's that's respectable. Yeah, that's what we'll do. So Tennessee falls sixty two to fifty five last night. It was a sixteen to two run that ultimately decides this thing in the second half. But the stat that we discussed on Monday this past week. FAU now becomes 26 and 0 when they win the rebounding battle. Tennessee now moves to 0 and 6 when they lose the rebounding battle. Yeah. There were not many teams in college basketball who could out rebound Tennessee this year. Uh, Kentucky was one of them. It's a big reason why they got swept by Kentucky. But ultimately, the way that this thing was trending for Tennessee, even up by three or four early in the second half. You didn't like the way this game was trending simply because FAU was missing open threes that you knew they were going to cash in on in the oh. second half. And as soon as they started getting more offensive rebounds and giving themselves second chance opportunities to, to hit those threes, uh, this thing unraveled really, really quickly for Tennessee. It did. And that's exactly what I saw it to be like everything that we talked about as far as how Tennessee can win to your point a second ago, how Tennessee can lose. What does FAU do well? What they don't do well? <clears throat> it it really showed itself. Like the the plan did not deviate at all. Well, as far as the analytics suggested in this game, and I I remember hearing uh, Savage speak about this early in the week when it came down and we knew we were going to face them. Was this? You can't allow them get those offensive rebounds because the easiest three to hit is the one off of a rebound with exactly. momentum right there. That right there is exactly what happened. And for us, the the balls like not being able to cash in on free throws, Tyree Key in the paint, Olivier Camois in the paint, like that was as bad as it could actually get. But when you mention the two teams in general, Tennessee, really good defense until it cracked, until you couldn't get those rebounds, Will. That was the biggest issue of the game. And it wasn't as if they weren't boxing out a guy would slip loose here or there and snatch a ball right snatch a rebound from right in front of one of our defenders that's unacceptable to me and I, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of people are gonna gonna bring up the idea that this was coaching this was a Rick Barnes thing I left that game I, I, I finished watching that game last night thinking to myself this was a player's loss the rebounding player's loss the missed shots, players lost. The, the the lack of defense around the perimeter in the second half, players lost to right. me. I didn't necessarily view, it, view this as a, a Rick Barnes pile on. Now, does it go with Rick Barnes? 100%. But I viewed this as players just didn't simply step up as much as you needed them to. Well, and I think it comes down to FAU making some really good second half adjustments and getting downhill and then kicking the ball out based off of the penetration they were getting in the lane. Yeah. And for the first 20 minutes in this game, FAU had nine first half turnovers and shot 21% from three. And Rick Barnes said it with Allie LaForce at his first interview. I believe it just really the under 12 timeout in the first half when Tennessee's up by seven or eight at this point. And, and Allie LaForce asked him, said, what are you analyzing? What are you negative about in this game? Because you probably couldn't complain about this start in a lot of ways, but I'm sure you'll find something. And he said, well, they're getting way too many open shots. They're yeah. just not making them yeah. yet. And when they do, we got to start to respond. Yep. And, and ultimately, that's what ended up changing this game uh, for the better for FAU. The 16-2 run midway through the second half that turned a six-point deficit into a 10-point lead. And, and it seemed like everything that had hurt this Tennessee team all year reared its ugly head at the worst possible time. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that included an Uroš Plavsic elbow and a flagrant yeah. foul that you just can't have happen in that moment on that stage. He has to contain himself. 
a whole lot better than he actually does, man. For a guy like him that has the experience and also the mark on his back the way he does, he can't allow that. You already go into this game knowing you're a very physical team. You go into this game already knowing that you say you want to drag people into the mud. He's done this numerous times throughout this this season, this Vol season, to where you're like, dude, that was unnecessary. For a guy that contributes but not as much as you need him to at times, you can't afford to be this guy. You go through games with not scoring any points. Now, I know his role isn't just the big-time scorer, which also, to me, was a bother early on in the game. They went to the paint more often because I thought they couldn't. The Vols couldn't find ways to score other than going through Euros. But with that being said, he's not afforded to act like this in these type of moments. Like, you have to be smarter. If there's something you can say Rick Barnes can get on to him about, it is that. You got to be a smart basketball player. That's one thing I always hated about playing with guys that didn't understand penalties or how to sell stuff or the magnitude of games. Don't be a dummy out there. Like, you have to watch the game. You have to be able to feel the game, too. And I thought Euros was outside of himself when the emotions of that second half kind of took over a little bit. He walked that line pretty well all year. And there were a couple of times, uh, specifically at, at Arizona, in a hostile environment early on in the season where uh, the emotions got the best of him a little bit. Rick Barnes, in that moment, called him out, addressed it publicly in the media. Yeah. Something that Rick is, uh, I don't know, Rick does. Yeah, uh, he no, does. It wasn't disrespectful, but, but I'm, sure just, he... I'm tired of his antics. There we go. And at that point, you've got to look back to that moment and say, why are we making the same mistake again on a big stage against a good team? And FAU is a good team, by yeah. the way. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that finished in the top 25 to end the season and by many accounts should have been a six or seven seed. That's not the story of this game. Yeah. Tennessee was a five and a half point favorite. One of the smallest teams of the country. You've got to be better rebounding the basketball in this game. But I think what Slade told us earlier this week, and I think he's right, and fans that are going to look at this box score and think like, how in the world are you getting out rebounded by one of the smallest teams of the country? And the more I look back at this game, they shoot so many threes that yeah. you're negating a lot of the size advantage down low that Tennessee has by virtue of the kinds of rebounds you're getting. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of long rebounds that come off of missed three-point shots. Yep. And I think the credit should go to FAU's guards for being hungrier for the basketball and being in the right place at the right time in order to give themselves an extra opportunity. I, I think this was as much about FAU overcoming the biggest matchup disadvantage more so than it was Tennessee just kind of fumbling the bag in this moment. And I'm not making mm -hmm. any excuses for Tennessee. I mean, th again, they were a five and a half point favorite, but sometimes you just lose. Sometimes the other team is really good. I mean, you get to the sweet 16 at this point Yeah. where I come at this one is FAU just a really good basketball team that had its really good day. Yeah. This put 40 I, uh, points in the second half. I agree with you on that one. And this is the thing, too. They won 34, now 34 games on the season. As far as the rebounding go, Will, like, this is the way Florida Atlantic plays. They they understand where the ball is going probably more than others. You know how you do something, Will, when you're probably working out or just running and stuff? You're like, I didn't know I could do that. Like, with them, they become so accustomed to playing this style of ball that they know how to rebound. Their guards know how to get in and figure out how to uh, navigate the, the the small nooks and crannies to get rebounds of where the ball is going to be at and also how to shoot off of those rebounds, too. They're used to this. They are. Now, again, did I think the Vols are going to win? 100%. Yes, I did. I thought they could drag them to the deep end. But that that's all good and fine when you drag teams to the deep end if you're efficient offensively too. Right. When they were efficient, when the Vols are efficient offensively in the first half of the game, that's when you knew they could play this pace of having a three- to six-point lead and be fine because they were efficiently offensively. Second half, different story. Not getting the rebounds, very big negative. Not able to hit those paint shots, very big negative for the Vols too. And they just simply couldn't get the three-point shot off to as clean as FAU could. That first half defense around the perimeter for the Vols. It was great. It was textbook. Yeah. It was. Right. Even contested shots and all. Like, they made a couple in the first half. But it was so locked tight to where it just simply fell off. And when momentum hits you and FAU had it in the second half, about what, about 12 minutes? In the yeah, second half? Yeah, it was about with 12 minutes left. Yeah, they with 12 minutes left. Run. Yeah, that, that's when it broke down for him. Now, again, 33 wins on the season. 
for this FAU team. They get it. They're not a bunch of slappies. I think they Again. were five and one in games decided by five or less points. Yeah, and they've won actually some tight games too. Yeah, I mean, that's game. what I'm saying. They're yeah. five and oh, one yeah. in games decided by less than five points. So they get it. They're, they're a good outfit. Again, well, can I say it real quick? You may go balls. Okay, <laughs> I'm not backing down off of this one. Uh, no, nor nor will you hear us ever back off off of that. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five is our number this morning. And we go to the phones where Eric in Nashville leads us off. Good morning, Eric. Hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, guys, earlier you were talking about the song, uh, One Shining Moment. I'm old enough to remember, and I'm sure there are other people that remember this, too, that the first song was This Is It by Kenny Loggins. Mm-hmm. And that started, I want to say, right around the time Bird played Magic in the finals. Uh, when Michigan State played Indiana State, I know that was on through about the 80s. I think it ended right around the mid to late 80s, I think. I can't remember because I want to say one shining moment. I believe it's been around since the nineties. So it's been. A, I believe it. It's it's it, it's been around for a long, long time. So, but anyway, guys, as far as last night's game, guys, I was hearing from UT fans uh, on both sides. There were some that were giving FAU credit that felt that most of them all thought Tennessee was going to win, but a lot of people were saying they thought it was going to be a little bit tougher game than they thought, and there were a few that thought that Tennessee was going to win easy. It was going to be a breeze. So. But it just goes to show you, if you don't play your game, uh, what happened last night can happen. Because, mm-hmm. uh, guys, I'll be honest, I watched the first half and then saw where, of course, UT didn't score for like those three minutes. And i I got to be honest, guys, I fell asleep uh, early in the second half when UT was still up. And then when I woke up and found out what happened, I just could not believe it. And then just hearing the rest of the game, kind of what happened, it just it's just unfortunate. But you got to give FMU uh Credit. They are yeah. very, very good basketball team guys, and I think they said now with the teams left, there are now only two teams left that uh, have won a national championship, and that's UConn and uh, UCLA. Oh, and uh, UCLA lost last night. Yeah, they lost last night. Oh, they night did. Too. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm no, sorry. all good. I'm all sorry. good. It was a late I, I, night. I, I, I'm incorrect. You, you're right. You're right. You're right. I, I'm incorrect. I'm sorry. I fell asleep. Forgot about that. No, you're right. Give Gonzaga credit for that win. But, guys, it's just going to be interesting to see what happens going forward. Guys, y'all take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. You Thank too, you, Eric. Eric. Appreciate, Appreciate the call. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, if you look hard enough, you can always find fans that are like, oh, we're not going to lose to them any anytime you want. So. Well, my thing is this, though. How are you supposed to fan out as a fan? Uh, however you want to. I know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the that's the weird part about people trying to dunk this morning. I'm like, yeah, we're supposed to do this, and you're supposed to get, get the, the back end of it, too. So... This is hilarious. Let's let's roll with it today, Will. I'm here for it. We go from one Eric in Nashville to another Eric in we got Nashville. Another Eric. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five this morning. What's going on, Eric? What's up, Eric? Rocky top of the morning. I swear, me and the other Eric, I've never seen him. <laughs> I've never talked to him. Kindred spirits. <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it it sucks. Last night sucked, but you know it's. It, the inconsistencies of the offense is what come back to bite them. Um, but, you know, hey, this team the la- this team was dead in the water for the last month, if you listen to everybody talk. They made a run. It didn't end well, but, hey, it is what it is. But for everybody, I want to make this, because this is really starting to piss me off. All these fire Rick Barnes people. Yeah. Let's. Let's take a step back. Okay. I remember 15, 20 years ago, close to in that number, Tennessee fired another Hall of Fame level coach in another sport and made a rash decision and didn't know what the hell they were doing. And they hired some jabroni who up and left us after a year and put us in a dumpster fire for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Now, the silver lining in that is Danny White's a lot smarter than the other guy, but that's like being the nicest guy in prison. It's not saying a whole lot. (laughs) But to everybody saying fire Rick Barnes, shut up. Shut up. We've been to five great tournaments. We've won an SEC championship regular season, won an SEC tournament uh, in the tournament, you know, postseason tournament. We're in a good spot. We are. They're going to be back next year. Everybody just relax. It's, it's basketball. It's basketball. Kentucky's been getting run out of the second round for the last few years. They're wanting to fire Calipari. Okay? Yep. Yep. Just relax. Michigan State's gone through a couple lulls in there. It's just everybody relax. Rick Barnes didn't get to be where he's at by being a bad coach. Just 
relax. I understand there's a lot of experts out there who, you know, they've won six straight NBA championships on NBA 2K or whatever. <laughs> They're experts in the game of basketball. Same as, you know, the Madden guys who, you know, they know football because they can hit a, hit a button on a control. I'm just, you know, Thank you, Eric. Yeah. Everybody have a good weekend. You too, Thank Eric. You. Appreciate it. I feel Eric do well. well. Everything's all right. I think, yeah. I think I have actually... I've purged my Twitter timeline Twitter timeline enough to where all of the Fire Rick Barnes people are are muted on my Twitter timeline. I don't see that crap anymore. Folks are just singing his praise, man, for making it to the Sweet like, Sixteen. Like it's so wishy washy. <laughs> it's like so literally all on Saturday. Vols fans, how can we go from one extreme to the next that fast? Though? Yeah, it, like I know it's emotional as heck. Will. It is. I feel it. I, I was like, man, I'm wasting my time staying up. Like, I said all of that last night. You feel me? But never the thought of let's fire Rick Barnes. Where is your upgrade at? Like, I <laughs> I do look at it and kind of say to myself, and you said this earlier when I was talking about it, like, the type of players that we have sometimes have to be able to, like, step up and make those clutch plays and be clutch guys in these types of moments. We've yet to kind of see that more consistently in this era. I will agree with that. The clutchness of players has to stand up a little bit better. But the overall coaching scheme of it from I mean, we we recently just heard Coach K say they got one of the best coaches in the in 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 all of college basketball, speaking of Rick Barnes. And I don't think that's just simply because he's been in the game for that long. I do think he's a really right. good coach. So it's it's kind of weird how you go from one extreme to the next based off of wins and losses when FAU was just that good last night. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you looked at the top 10 wins that Tennessee basketball has had, probably about half of them belong to Rick Barnes. In this era? I mean, who else are you going to go get? I, I know it's always an answer for that, right? right. There's always the answer, well, you can go get, yeah, yeah, yeah I get all of that. Yeah, but, like, is it a justifiable firing at this point because he lost in the no, Sweet 16? It's a ridiculous conversation. And we're quick to do that as a fan base, too. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that. Most most definitely. I mean, Tennessee fans aren't alone in that. No, 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 no. Absolutely. That's the not. SEC way. I mean, Auburn's been doing it with football coaches for years, and so is Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I, I mean, somebody tweeted at me last night when I said, you know, Dusty May at Florida Atlantic will have a blue blood job within the next, you know, year or two. Yeah. And somebody said, well, can we get him? So, well, no, we don't have an opening. <laughs> Not for not for any time soon. Yeah. And Rick Barnes is not the type from from everyone I talked to up there and just spending time covering that team. Yeah. It, it, is he's not the kind of guy who's just going to sit at the house and play golf. Like he, the way Nick Saban talks about I, I don't know how to just sit around and do nothing. I'm going to do this until, you know, I can't anymore because those those guys who are just competitive freaks. Yeah. Were, and Rick Barnes fits into that into that mold. He doesn't know how to sit at the house and just not do anything. No, no, absolutely. So. I just got a text from, from one of my sources to say FAU has did a clean sweep of Tennessee this year. How Memphis, so? MTSU, UT, and Me- UT Chat. Memphis is Tennessee? Okay. <laughs> 615-737-1045 is the number if you it's want to idiot. jump in or uh, jump on us because I assume many of you will want to do that. Uh, coming up. More of your phone calls, a recap of everything else going on in the tournament last night. Simone, Kaylin, Will, 104.5 The Zone. Hey, it's Will Bowling here for my friends at Lee Company. Hey, everybody has a home improvement project on their to-do list. What's yours? Uh, I'm sure you've got a list in the back of your head right now, wherever you are. Well, as the temperatures heat up, Lee Company wants you to know that you've got a trusted friend that can help you if you get stuck. And it's a trusted friend that's been trusted in this community for nearly 80 years. In fact, Lee Company offers free home improvement tips and tricks on their website every month. You can visit leadcompany.com slash resources for ideas on landscaping, backyard makeovers, and much, much more. Lee Company has all you need to help that to-do list disappear. So do what I do and trust the folks who have been trusted here for nearly 80 years. Give them a call at 615-567-1000. That's leadcompany.com slash resources. Let the folks at Lee Company help you 
get rid of that to-do list as spring starts here in Nashville. 615-567-1000. That's Lee Company. All you need.
It's Ramon, Kaylin, Will, powered by all four seasons, garage doors on a 104.5 The Zone. Robert Walsh at the controls this morning. Filling in for Jonathan Schaefer. Kayla Anderson, a day off. Just Ramon Foster, Will Bowling with you. A therapeutic Friday morning on the phone lines at 615-737-1045. We go back to the phones where Bo is in Murfreesboro. Next up this morning. What's going on, Bo? I'm doing well. Listen, a couple, three points I'd get off just to get your opinion. I'd really like to like Will to look up the shot differential in the first two games between Key and and Kamwa, how many yeah, shots mm-hmm. they took. Uh looked like Key got a lot of shots last night that uh, were a little bit out of character from the offense. And, look, this is how ten- Tennessee's got one way to beat you right now. They don't have a, a single prolific score, nor do they have three or four guys that can that can contribute to get you in the 60s or 70s. Uh, so, all in all, I think, I think that was kind of to be expected. If they won the game, it was going to be a three- to five-point game mm-hmm. either way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing that, that really bothered me about the whole game, and I don't know that it's a coaching thing or a, a coaching staff thing, but the game had been three to five points basically for the last five minutes of the first half to the first ten minutes of the second half. And uh, we we kind of let FSU, FAU go on that run, and we had those timeouts. I mean, you know, I would have liked to have seen them. I'd like to have seen the staff stop, try to stop those runs by stopping the gameplay, right? Um, especially in that long one, you know, I think we can make it a call to timeout, and if they come out and score four more, call another one. You know, uh, Ziegler not being in there is going to sound crazy, but probably didn't help us on the rebounding end. You know, it's a backcourt screening off mm-hmm. the boards and that kind of thing. But anyway, all in all, it was, a, it was a fantastic year for a team that, let's face it, was pretty limited on offense. They won the way that they had to win yep. when they did, and and it was just, I mean. It was really predictable. Uh, I'm with Will or, or whichever one of you guys said, Moan, earlier. You know, FAU could have really stretched. We made some chippies in the first half, yeah. but, they, you know, if they were hitting right out of the locker room, that game could have been out of hand yeah. Yeah. sooner than it was. So I'll get off and listen to those points, guys, and uh, really enjoy the show. Thanks, Thanks for the call. Appreciate the call. Um, uh, the comment on Olivier Kamwa and Tyree Key. Uh, against Duke, Tyree Key was only one of seven, one only of had three seven. points. Uh, and then against Florida Atlantic last night, Tyreek Key nine. was two of nine for five points. Um, Olivier Kamwa, though, I'll give him a little bit of grace in this matchup specifically. Olivier Kamwa was the perfect matchup nightmare for Duke because Duke had those two big guys and Lively and Filipowski they put on the floor at the same time. And yeah. We talked about this with Bob Kessling on Monday. Mm-hmm. You got to have one of those seven footers step out and guard Kamwa on the perimeter. So Olivier was taking those guys off the dribble and picking it up top of the key. I mean, he made three of his four threes against uh, against Duke because he had bigger guys that couldn't come out and guard him all the way. Right. Florida Atlantic was the opposite. Mm-hmm. They were smaller and could put a guard on him and say, back us down, we dare you, I dare and you. try those fadeaways. And mm-hmm. Olivier Kamo was 10 of 13 shooting more open shots because bigs weren't coming out to guard him and couldn't handle him when he got on the dribble. Um, and then in this game, he was two of nine, just had six points and was zero of two from three. Only had four rebounds of this one, too. Um, and, and that's the difference for Olivier Kamwa. This was a game you needed your guards in uh, Tyreek Key, Josiah Jordan James, who had 10 points and six boards. Um, Santiago Vescovi, who it felt like had more than nine points last night, but only had nine points. Uh, this was a game for your guards to to pick up for. Uh, you know, what your forwards were able to do in the Duke game. I knew when I heard the commentator say uh, Tennessee ball handling and uh, security for the guards, uh, when it started to get a little bit sloppy into the second half, I was like, yeah, we're probably in trouble right now because at that point it looked like mm-hmm. FAU was pressing a whole lot more. Not, not in a press, but specifically getting after Meshack and Josiah, guys that was controlling the ball. Tyreek, he did not look comfortable with the ball in his hand most of last night. And then when we started going to the paint also and trying to make shots and in the paint, they were getting their FAU was getting their hands all over the ball as far as like just making it a very congested game. That's what I'd probably call it. It was a very congested game from how FAU kind of swarmed the Vols in the second half to me. Well, it wasn't clean at all. It, they had no execution that you needed to sustain the same way that they did in the first half. It is what it is. Uh, FAU played a really good game. Let's get one more call before we go to our uh, final break of hour number one. Let's go to Vols Deep. 
Hey. Calling in with us this morning. Falls Good morning, Falls Deep. How's it going, everybody? Can you hear me? Yes. We got you. Awesome. How's, how's it going? I'm going to chime in. Uh, last night's loss, it sucked. But give credit to Florida Atlantic. They had a really good season, and I liked it. And I liked that a lot of our players didn't even overlook them. Now, I'm going to touch on what y'all said about the whole fire Rick Barnes people. It's the same people that were wanting to get rid of Tannehill the minute, uh, the minute Brady was on the free agency market. Flip floppy, wishy washy fans, as I use in quotations. Not, not people who really stick by their team, who probably really didn't stick by the worst of times for Tennessee in general before they were even good, and that's why they're hopping on, because they're good now, because it's bandwagoners, mm-hmm. as in what most SEC fans are. Yeah, I'm trash-talking, I'm choosing violence. Go ahead. Yeah, perfect. As a, but, as a, but it is what it is. We still got baseball coming up. Let's cheer on the baseballs. Lady Vols are still in the tournament. Let's keep cheering them on. And falls around the corner for the football and next year's basketball season. Go Big Orange. Ball Nation out. Hey, man. You, Steve. It, so I, I made this comment like when I was in school and uh, the first bring back Kiffin chant started at a Tennessee basketball game that I was at during that coaching mm-hmm. search when, when Tennessee ultimately hired Jeremy Pruitt. And I literally had to have the conscious thought to myself of, I don't think most of these freshmen were like high school seniors who want this. We're old enough to remember 2009 and 2010. Yeah. And the way, wow. like, like that's what like I legitimately that. feel like about these fans that now want Rick Barnes fired and want Rick Barnes gone. And I, I feel bad even giving those people a platform this morning because I don't think there are as many of them as we think they are. But I feel like those people aren't old enough to remember what Tennessee basketball was yeah. like before really before Ron Slay got there yeah, um, before a, a, a good group of guys from Slay's era to Bruce Pearl to, yeah. uh, you know, when, when I was growing up, when Tennessee basketball was a big deal, it wasn't mm-hmm. always a big deal. No, <laughs> It was not always Preach a big deal. Well. Those curtains were out for a lot of buzz ball games, <laughs> buzz ball, the curtains up in the top of Thompson bowling arena have not been needed for a men's basketball game in quite a long time. Mm-hmm. So, We'll, uh, we'll dive more into that coming up next. We'll take a look at Kansas State. My goodness. Uh, a star is born in uh, Marquise Noel of Kansas State, the team that I'm going to be rooting for the rest of the tournament uh, because I don't I don't remember a more electric player maybe since Kimball Walker in the team, NCAA tournament team, Cleve. than this kid. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to Tony and Mount Juliet on the phone lines as well coming up next. 615-737-1045. It's Ramon, Kalen, Will. 104.5 The Zone. It's Ramon for Window Nation. Look, everyone loves a smart investment. There is no better place to put your money right now than in your home. And if your home is 20 years or older, Window Nation has the perfect offer for you. You get 0% financing for five years. This is unheard of. Zero interest for five years. Window Nation will give you two free windows with every two you buy. Protect and increase, yes, increase the value of your home today simply by calling 866-90-NATION or going online at windownation.com. The best part Part about them too is the average installer has over 16 years of experience with over 20,000 windows installed and you can trust them to install your windows because the longer you have old drafty windows the more money you are wasting on your heating bill over time window nation has saved their customers over 60 million dollars on their energy bills Again, listen to me. Buy two, get two free on any style window from Window Nation. Plus, pay nothing with no interest until 2025. Call them. 866 nation or go online at windownation.com.
What's going on from the Superbook.com Sports Desk? I'm Robert Walsh. The Vols fell last night in the Sweet 16. The Owls used a second-half push led by Michael Forrest to upset the fourth-seeded Tennessee Volunteers, 62-55 to last night in the Sweet 16. Nine-seeded FAU will play the third-seeded Kansas State in the East Regional Final at Madison Square Garden on Saturday. This is the Owls' first Elite Eight appearance. Some other NCAA scores from last night. Gonzaga beat UCLA 79-76. to Six. Uh, Arkansas fell to UConn 88-65, and Kansas State beat Michigan State 98-93 in overtime. In the NFL, the NFL sent out a memo to all clubs Thursday notifying them that a person who is not certified by the NFLPA might be attempting to persuade team personnel to enter into contract negotiations with Baltimore quarterback Lamar Jackson, who received the non-exclusive franchise tag. Under league rules, teams can only speak with Jackson because he does not have an agent. According to the memo obtained by ESPN's Adam Schefter. The NFLPA informed the league that Ken Francis, who is not a certified agent with the Players Union, might be contacting teams regarding Jackson. Jackson denies this report. For all your fans, your repair and waterproofing needs, visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Titans and the Vols. This is 104.5 The Zone. Hour number two, it's Ramon, Kayla, and Will, powered by all four seasons garage doors as Tennessee season comes to an end in Madison Square Garden and the Sweet 16. We recap that with Jason Swain coming up in hour number three at 820. Get back into the Titans discussion around the NFL headlines at 920 with Jim Wyatt and hear from you. 615-737-1045. No Kayla Anderson or Jonathan Schaefer today meeting Robert Walsh is at the controls and Ramon Foster, present and accounted for here in our 104.5 The Zone studios. Yeah, My yeah, name yeah. is Will Bowling. His name is Will Bowling! Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I said yesterday, Robert, that I actually said it in hour one. I said, I hope Robert's awake to hear this, but I doubt it. <laughs> and said, the, the, my favorite part of hearing that is just hearing your voice. It's not even about me. I, good, Lucky for you, I could never make that noise again i could never <laughs> hit that octave again the one time i did it that was the i'm glad that was the only time no that's my first time ever getting to hear it on air that's my first time ever getting hit the button on air oh lovely so i've got a itchy trigger finger all morning well, just uh, as you feel needed i did not know that ramon also had an intro you want to hear it i uh, <laughs> i would love to who the hell are you ramon uh, uh, it's a rent brian original <laughs> say my name it ramon is. What? Say what? my Say name. My I don't have a damn clue. Yeah, you really yeah, you do. Do you respect the bad guy? Ramon, Ramon. Nobody better, man. Oh, my God. They, <laughs> nobody better. I'm telling you, this takes me back. Every time I hear him, I'm like my grandmama's house, man, just like wrestling when I was the biggest wrestler. I know I tell this story every single time. But you know you hear or see something or do something, you're like, man, specifically, that's where I go every single time. Mm-hmm. Love it. It's a good Love one. Love it. Uh, Rhett Bryan didn't have to go that hard, but I'm really glad he did. Uh, me too. That's what real radio production sounds like, <laughs> not the jabroni mess that you hear from me. Like not, <laughs> not, not easy. <laughs> not easy. easy. That's the, he, he's that the is, major leagues, uh, and I'm whatever's underneath no, the major no, leagues. No, you're 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 doing good. You're, you're, doing, you're doing good. You're doing good. You do good. Yeah, Robert yeah, Walsh is the like major you don't leagues. Believe that. No, here's here's <laughs> what's going on. Robert Walsh is the major leagues. You're the NFL. Rhett Bryan is just the the, the, He's the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Famer. Yeah. Mm. That's been doing this for a long time and now is in a front office role because his playing days wrapped up. Exactly. I can hey, respect he's that. he's Ozzie Newsom. He's Ozzie Newsom. Newsom. I don't know if he'd be happy with me comparing him to someone who works for the Baltimore Ravens, Probably but you not. know what? Exactly. I'll take like, that punishment from him when he gets in this morning. I was <laughs> treating you like Stewie when he did that to, to Peter and Brian. You, 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 you're doing good. It's not your, it's not your fault, Brian. <laughs> That's our Bert, though. 615-737-1045, the number. We'll get to uh, more of your phone calls coming up in just a minute. But uh, 
Well, the big headline of the day, Tennessee uh, was 0-5 all season when they got out rebounded, and at the worst possible time last night, it became 0-6 yeah. as they fall to uh, Florida Atlantic 62-55. to That is the story of the morning. And coming up in about 10 minutes, um, uh, we're going to get into the conversation, Ramon and I, and, uh, and on the phone lines as well at 615-737-1045, about how you'll remember this team. But what is the legacy of this Rick Barnes basketball team? Because I feel like there's a lot of different places people can take that. You know, you can think about a team that probably was a number one overall seed at one yeah. point in February. And then I think some people are going to say this team overachieved once Zakai Ziegler went out and most of us had Duke beating them in the second round and still probably met or exceeded expectations by getting to the Sweet 16. That's the difficult part, Ramon, of of breaking down this specific group is as soon as Akai Ziegler went out, it's not an excuse uh, for a Tennessee team that had a massive opportunity to make the Final Four and couldn't against a nine seed. But ultimately, when you look at this thing from the wider perspective, yeah. I'm interested to see where Tennessee fans land on that question. Yeah, me too. And I, I think it's a very good question to ask. And, and I'll say this too, Vol fans, however you felt, you're not wrong in it either. The one pushback I'm going to have after this season, especially when you hit the Sweet 16 minus your starting point guard, uh, is is the idea that you should fire the coach like this soon. Like yeah, sports well, is it's very emotional. I, I, I'm i an emotional fan now. I was having a conversation with my wife. I was like, like, this is cool. I get to be a fan. I'm on the fan side of it. I see more <laughs> fan conversation, too. And how toxic it can get too. Will uh, now that I'm I'm really embedded in this thing, man. Uh, but yeah, I, that's my only pushback is the Rick Barnes narrative. I, I'm not here to hear that. Anything else? You say, hey, we underperform, overperform. I'm here for all of that. And yeah, FAU got us. It, you just drew the short end of it. We ain't have enough in the second half. I think there's an argument to to certainly be made on both sides. And interesting to. Take the temperature of the Tennessee fan base the morning after a, a late night loss. Also, that uh, that makes the the headache the day after the game hurt a little bit more <laughs> you know, when, it, when it went so late and uh, you're going to work this morning. Uh, we go back to the phone lines though at six one five seven three seven one zero four five. We go to Tony in Mount Juliet up next. Good morning, Tony. Tony, you there? Hello. Hey. Yes. You're on. I'm here. Uh, I just have a quick comment. Uh, all these vows for life that are uh, willing to to let uh, Rick Barnes go, they may may ought to consider uh, Bert Bertelkamp your color guy because three minutes into the game last night, he had it all figured out. He told Bob Kessling, said, Bob, said, all we got to do is throw the ball inside to our bigs uh, and we'll kill them. We'll just kill them. That's all I've got to say about that. and yeah. And that's money. And that's money. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate <laughs> the call. Money. Well, he was right early, and uh, FAU adjusted and didn't let Tennessee throw the ball inside. Uh, that was the, it. Worked. Euros had a big, big role in the uh, first half of that game, and he dominated. This is the thing too. When FAU's uh, big man started to push back a little bit, Euros got a little bit outside of himself. That's the portion of it right there that probably hurt him the most as far as the ability to sustain that end later in the first half. And and definitely in the second half, Will, is he got emotional. Yes, the role of getting the ball uh, inside to the bigs was good. I think you slowed the game down. You needed to against a, a fast playing offense the way FAU has last night. But that wasn't sustainable when they're hitting threes and we can't penetrate enough to get the ball in and then kick it back out. The second half of it, to me, this team around the perimeter was, I ain't going to say they were hesitant because I think FAU played really good defense down the stretch when you, when you asked them to not let us get shots. And it proved, heck, what we have, 58 points? 50, 55. 55 62 points. to 55, yeah. the final score. Uh, let's go to David in Lebanon up next, 615-737-1045. Good morning, David. Good morning, gentlemen. I just wanted to say the first thing is that uh, – us being Vol fans, and believe me, I bleed orange, is our pride. Sometimes we let our mouths overspeak our common sense. This team overachieved in my mind. Uh, they've done a great season with the downfalls they had. But I can remember the days when we was in much glory, and then I can remember the days when my friendship Christian commanders could have beat them on the basketball court. <laughs> 
That's fair. That's fair. This team was amazing this year, and I give them all the kudos. People that's wanting Coach Barnes' head need to shut up. They really do because, like I said, I can remember the days when we was begging for a win, even up there on the hill. Mm-hmm. And, guys, y'all do an amazing job. People that's giving Coach Barnes a hard time, back off. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, yeah. David. Appreciate, Appreciate the call. It, David. So let's react to that coming up next because – there's two ways you can go here, or, or maybe there's a third. That this team just met expectations, but did this team overachieve or underachieve? Uh, what is the story of the 2023 Tennessee basketball team when you look at it from the wider perspective? Um, you know, whether you're a Tennessee fan or not, 615 737 1045. How will you remember this Tennessee group that ultimately couldn't beat a nine seed to get to the Elite Eight, where they've only been once in school history, but at the same time, still beat a Duke team in which uh, many did not expect them to beat without their starting point guard to get to that point uh, and make it hurt a little bit more for Tennessee fans this morning. 615-737-1045. We'll react to that. We'll take your phone calls as well this morning on Ramon, Kayla, and Will, 104.5 The Zone.
It's Ramon, Kalen, Will, powered by all four seasons, garage doors on 104.5 The Zone with Ramon Foster. I'm Will Bowling. Come on, Kayla brother. Anderson and Jonathan Schaefer off this morning. Robert Walsh spinning the hits. 615-737-1045 is how you jump in on the conversation. Did Tennessee underachieve or did they overachieve with Rick Barnes this season? How will you remember this Tennessee team? 615-737-1045. We'll get your your phone calls on that coming up in a minute. But uh, first, Ramon. Yeah. A five foot eight kid named Marquise Noel <clears throat> from Harlem. Yeah. Got to play in Madison Square Garden last night and set a tournament record with 19 assists. 19 assists. Nasty. And 20 points on a, a bad leg after a ankle injury in the first half of this game. Nothing but willpower. <laughs> Nothing. Because he actually hurt that thing. There needs to be one shining moment, and then there needs to just be a one shining moment of his highlights from this tournament. He he legitimately him man as far as guard <laughs> play like he and you can say oh he's just like, no he is nice man he's going up against bigs he's using the angles properly he's been able to to create for his teammates he is the point guard of the tournament for me will that's the way I'm looking at it. and man you want to talk about a green light. Whew. <laughs> he will pull up Crazy. at your mama house you <laughs> hear me? <laughs> Where will he so pull up there, will? Right? Your daddy's house. You hear me? He, he was he was pulling up from Harlem. He was, yeah, he was last night from his hometown. Like when he said after the game when they won it, this my city. He meant that. Him. He meant that, man. Uh, I'm 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 not just happy for the guy. I like to see performances. I'm happy for the performance, not because oh, of yeah. his size, right. none of that type stuff. 19 assists and still be able to drop 20 points too. Crazy. Don't get much crazier than that. That's some legendary stuff. So I said earlier that he reminded me of Kimba Walker when. UConn made that run in, in 2014 to the national championship. Kimball Walker, also mm-hmm. from New York. Kimball <laughs> Walker also won the East Regional in Madison Square Garden. It's, it's, so literally, it's deja vu all over again. Nine years later, where Kimball Walker and UConn won the national title in 2014 with a small New York-based point guard who balled out in his home arena, Madison Square Garden, to win the East Regional. And now nine years later, you got a small New York based point guard who's balling out in Madison Square Garden to probably win the East Region. Doing the same thing. That is beautiful, man. He was like so it was fun watching. Heck, I was over there watching the uh what was the UConn and Arkansas game. Y'all text like, man, you you you're watching <laughs> you're watching the wrong game. I'm watching the I'm trying to be pro SEC out here, the wrong man. Wrong game. The wrong game. Yeah, but that's right. It is what it is, though, man. Um First, getting a sip of coffee. Now I'm ready to roll, Will. Well, and we do have uh, coffee, uh, courtesy of the best coffee in Nashville, Eighth and Roast, by the Eighth way. Eighth and Roast. Shout out to Q. When I say the best coffee in Nashville, if yeah. you're a local, if you're a transplant, if you're just uh, passing through, uh, that's the coffee you need in your life. Easy. Eighth and Roast is. Oh, it's going to sustain me this morning. Man, and the I, pastries, too. I need it. Yeah. Best yeah, pastries 100%. in Nashville. Uh, yeah. Rhett B. just walked in there with Uncle oh, Bert, Bryan. too, man. Is he here? Oh, help, go, hey, help yourself. I just hope Rhett Bryan isn't going to kneecap me for comparing him to somebody that's associated with the Baltimore Ravens. Maybe he didn't hear that, and I'm telling on myself. That's that's really a poor decision by me. He's got that death stare on you right now. <laughs> Essentially, what had happened was what had happened was, was. Uh, we uh, Robert did not realize that Rhett had made a an intro for Ramon. And so we played Ramon's intro, and Robert reacted to it live on the air and said, Rhett is like the NFL, and I'm whatever minor league there is for for football. And I said, no, you're in the NFL. Rhett's just like the the retired player who has now gone into front office management. You know, like Ozzie Newsome or something. He called you Ozzie Newsome. That's a Hall of Fame status, though, too, Rhett B. Good morning, Rhett. Hey, that's big time. I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, Robert is very talented and uh, has a lot of stylings and um, approach to things like I do. In fact, uh, Schaefer and I say he's like my the son I never had. Uh, we're so much alike in that respect creatively. So, uh, but yeah, uh, if I, I'll I'll take that I'm Ozzy Newsome all day long. That's uh, that's Hall of Fame career right there. Yeah, I'd even sit down with you and have a cup of coffee if you were Ozzy Newsome. Despite the rat birds, despite the rat, as Bert sit right there, one hundred percent. Despite us making chicken legs out of the rat birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's the energy we got this morning. I love it. Rhett Bryan, ladies I love and gentlemen. It, y'all. Uh, uh, but what, let me ask you this about Marquise Noel. Okay, I didn't want to yeah. take his thunder away. Sure. Tournament MVP at this point right now, just big as So far? So far. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's fun watching them. 
watching his team, watching mm-hmm. them. Did you see the back alley back alley oop? Oh yeah. Oh, scripted. Him and Drew Timmy both are the two that are playing for for tournament MVP. Oh, oh my gosh! Crazy. When he threw that alley oop from the kid from Florida, uh, 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 uh Keontae Johnson. Yes, him. Got you. That was about as good of a play I've ever seen. I think he scripted that with their coach on the sideline, too, to distract he the defense. He looked at Jerome Tang, and Jerome Tang gave him a signal. Like what? And he, th- he gave him 21, and he threw it up immediately. Oh said, 21, can you do God. something for me? Can you do something? <laughs> anyway. When you start acting like this on a Friday, I'm here for it. Anyway, 615-737-1045 is the number. And uh, the question we asked to you this morning did Tennessee overachieve? Did they underachieve? What is the legacy of this Tennessee basketball team uh, as you move forward uh, after this tournament comes to an end? We begin with Jason in Nashville, first up on the phone lines this morning. Good morning, Jason. Hey, good morning, guys, man. I'm so happy to be on the show with the best producer in the world, Craig. Yeah. Yeah, you baby. Know who he is. 100%. <laughs> hey, so, um, Quick, quick comment on the Tennessee question, then I got something for Ramon. Tennessee play with heart. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of them. They play with heart, and that's all you can ask of anybody. So am I disappointed? No, I'm, I'm happy with Tennessee. Um, the next comment, Ramon, man, you did something for my day, man, with you talking about how that music took you back because I still remember that, like, that NWO music coming out on WCW mm-hmm. Nitro when they said, new, new, new world order. You know, and then you had Dennis Rodman and you had all these different people coming out back then. Because, Ramon, I got to be honest with you, I'm from man to man. When I found out that wrestling was fake, it crushed my world. Me too. I mean, it was like a soap opera that I never wanted to end, and it just crushed my world, man. So, But you took me back today, man. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the call. I never forget my stepdad, man. Was he used to just be? He didn't say it like forcefully, try to make us not believe it. He's like, y'all know that's fake, right? We oh, we be in the front, like what? No, you see him slam him on his head like that. That's not fake. You he hit the ground. He was like, not all of it's fake. Like they take the hits. Oh man, I would have. I would have argued them up and down, well, for something like that. It's like, no, it's not fake, man. Me and Nardo used to go in other rooms like, it ain't fake, it's real. Little so, bit, uh, I know. Uh, classic. Uh, classic. So I'll, I'll ask you the question first, Ramon. Okay. Uh, how will you remember this Tennessee basketball team? I think they, if you're asking overachieve, underachieve, I think they overachieve considering. I do. Uh, they number one at the time they hit a hot streak, Will. When they were number one ranked, I think they hit a hot streak. They were supposed to win those games. Now, when you really broke it down, and this is the thing, too, getting to the second half of the season, teams learn you. Can you evolve from that? Can your players grow up from that? And I know you have some very seasoned veteran guys on this Vols basketball team, but then you look at the injuries. You look at how the inconsistencies of their shots, like that's the biggest portion of it to me. Like the front end of the, the, the basket, how many times they hit that, not not just last night, but throughout the year, though, Will, like I, maybe overachieved is a slight towards him. But considering all things of having Josiah be out for a stretch, uh, not watching Olivier become the player that you want him to be all the time. Julian Phillips being out. Uh, Vescovy having Andrews like there was a lot of in and out and, and, and abrupt stops for this team. So to get to the Sweet 16, Will, I'm gonna throw a one rose rose at them. Be like, hey, here's your flower. Like, yeah, I thought that was a solid season. I think two things can be true at the same time. Tennessee exceeded my expectations without Zakai Ziegler by beating Duke and getting to the second weekend of the Sweet 16. They also missed a massive opportunity to get to their second Elite Eight in program history, and for the first time since 2010. I think both of those things can be true at the same time. You don't have to pick one today. Yeah. Uh, and I think the third thing that's true is FAU is a good basketball team. This is not your everyday nine seed that you were just trying to cruise through and get to the elite eight. This was a team that was top 25 by the end of the season who has now won 34 games this year, yeah. which we said all week uh, and recognized. But, you know, I, I think when you look at the totality of the entire season from the expectations going into preseason and, and the way this thing ended, I think it's fair to say Tennessee met expectations perhaps underachieved just a little bit, but you put yourself at the opportunity to get to a place where your program's only been once. 
you were banged up the entire season. I know Chad Newman, the Tennessee trainer, was quoted as saying going into this game that in his 28 years of doing this, he's never seen injuries at this magnitude of players that are this important to Tennessee's team. Yeah. Which isn't an excuse. It's, I think, relevant to the entire conversation about the way this team will be remembered. I think we're going to remember most, though, unfairly, we're going to remember the missed opportunity. Oh, yeah. About this team. And, and and it's the exact same way. Uh, my brother made this comparison uh, talking with him last night. It's the same way 2001 Tennessee football will be remembered. Mm-hmm. When they had a halftime lead on LSU in the SEC championship and lost to a backup quarterback in the second half, that's probably the best Tennessee team in the history of the program for football. But it, it's unfair, but it's the reality of the situation. Yeah. We remember them for the missed opportunity that they had on the biggest stage at the end of that season. And although it's not fair to this team, it's not fair to the injuries that Zakai Ziegler had and the the problems that Tennessee had throughout the entire season with injuries to important players. It's the reality of the way expectations and the way that opportunities work that we will always remember this 2023 Tennessee team as the team that couldn't beat a nine seed to get to the elite eight. And I hate that for that group of of players and for Rick Barnes, who mm-hmm. probably deserved better based on the their play throughout the entire season. So here's uh, a tweet from Brandon Luckett on Twitter right here. As he adds us and says, can we all just agree that the performance – I, I want to know where you're at on this one too, and I think it's a fair criticism. Can we can we all just agree the performance of uh, Josiah and Tyreek Key was just terrible for a couple of seniors? And Barnes needs to recruit – a guy that can shoot and not ruin him when he takes one bad shot. I'll, I'll push back on the not ruin him because Barnes is always coaching, always coaching, always coaching. Uh, so I ain't necessarily in on the last part, but where, what, where are you at on the performance of Josiah and Tyreek for how they're supposed to show up? Because that was one thing Grant kind of called out the other day when I asked him for a pick of who needs to rise up. He put Josiah out there. I mean, Josiah in this game was three for 11 from the floor. Had six rebounds, two assists, two steals, and 10 points. Led you in scoring. Uh, Tyreek Key in this one had five points, two of nine shooting against FAU. Um, Just couldn't hit a lot of his open shots. I think Josiah Jordan-James was always the alpha that could have been for Tennessee basketball. Mm -hmm. A guy who was a five-star talent coming out of the state of South Carolina out of high school. Originally came to Tennessee perhaps as a one and done and ended up staying for for four years. And maybe he'll stay for a fifth. Who knows? Yeah. All of Tennessee's team has eligibility to come back next year. Not all of them will. Um, I don't think you can put this loss primarily on Josiah Jordan James. Yeah. No, I, I guess the pair of the two guys. When I, when, and I, I feel where he's coming from as far as like having leadership take you to the other side. Sure. The ball was dropped two for nine this game for Tyreek Key and one for seven against Duke. That to me is a big issue right there, specifically when you're supposed to be the shooter. Right. When you're supposed to have that flamethrower, as Savage calls it at times, and all we get is a, a big lighter. Like we can't have those moments. You, you feel me? I have a hard time singling out just one guy for this loss. I think FAU was the better team last night it, in totality. I, I don't I don't think I'm singling it out, but I think when it comes down to you being able to rise up in these types of moments when you're an older guy, you're supposed to. I'm not saying he's the reason we're lost. Sure, right. What I'm saying is you, you have to be able to find that one game, I'll give you. All right, cool. Like, I think we all looked at Olivier this past weekend and said, Olivier went for 27. I don't know if Olivier is going to go for 27 again. Oh, right. Right? So that's what I'm right. saying. Like, if you go two, if you go one for seven against Duke, I need a five for seven the next time around. Sure. Somehow, some way. And that's all I'm saying. I can't personally have two bad games in a row. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, well, and that was Olivier Kamwa's issue all season. Yeah. He yeah. would have 27 against Texas, and then Tennessee goes to Gainesville and loses to a down Florida team with a new head coach. Mm-hmm. So. Speaking of that Florida team, Gator Mike is on the phone lines. Let's hear it. Baby. Our favorite Gator, 615 737 1045. Good morning, Gator Mike. What's up, Gator Mike? Okay. Hey, Tennessee hey, Radio oh, people. There he is. Besides, sorry, we, besides uh, my we buddy Brent, the you know? Buddy. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Mike. I said, uh, no, I, said, I said, thanks for the comment. You are my favorite Tennessee Radio <laughs> people, besides Brent and Ron, you, you know? So it's, it's, all, it's all love here. Appreciate you. But <laughs> hey, I'm. Ramon, I'm glad you brought that up. I was picking up dinner to go, and I saw that reverse oop to Keontae Johnson, and I was like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Like, 
dude, that was nasty. And, you know, you just felt like they had that momentum and then for it to go to overtime. But, you know, I'm happy for him being a Florida guy and, you know, what he went through medically and all that stuff to see him have this moment for him and, you know, excelling and doing well. And then, of course, Will, I have to say, I was pulling for a Florida Atlantic because Dusty May, former assistant under Mike White, that's right. You know, so we kind of got that thing. But, no, I think I think it kind of like with Florida this year, you know, I think the one player really that Tennessee couldn't lose, kind of like Florida losing Castleton, was the Kai Ziegler. So I think they I think they overachieved based on that loss because I didn't expect them to do much not having Ziegler for the tournament. So I think it was a great year for them. You know, I kind of wanted to see him get to that Elite Eight, though, again. Yeah. And maybe get to the Final Four is what me and my boys are talking about, just for, you know, the hype around the team. Kind of like, you know, Vanderbilt, the way they finished and stuff. You know, you wish they would have been in the tournament. But, you know, overall, it's been a great tournament. But, I, like I told the uh, – I don't think it was Robert. Whoever answered the phone. Oh, I was wow. like, that. yeah, that Kansas State-Michigan State game, that was a game for the ages, though, for this tournament. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, it Gator was. Mike. Appreciate the call. <clears throat> Thanks, Gator Mike. And it, that's kind of judged him a little bit as being in the, uh, overachieving a little bit too, Will, when it comes down to what, what was expected and what, what, what happened and what transpired throughout the season, man. I think it's fair. I think it is. And um, the, the game that uh, that game last night between Kansas State and uh, uh, Kansas, the game, the Kansas State game reminded me of Kansas State, Michigan State. I was up late. Yeah, was uh, reminded me of was the uh, the Tennessee Purdue game in 2019. Yeah. Which was what, 98 to 92, I think was the final score in that one, or uh, 97 to 93. I can't yeah. remember what specifically it was, but. Both teams were in the 90s. It went to overtime, and people were just raining threes. Yeah. Ridiculous. It brought back some bad memories, actually. Uh, you know what? <laughs> well, you, you do that often, man. You, you'll you rehash some well, stuff, and then you no, no, but then you'll think about it after. It's like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have talked about you know, that. You <laughs> know, to be fair, though, to me, yeah. the reason why I have battered ball syndrome is literally because of things that happened, like, last night. <laughs> like, that's literally, you just saw the, the proof of concept. I know. For why I have been the way that I have been. I, I know, okay. man. It is We're recovering okay. Addict. You are recovering addict. My, my question is this, man. Considering how uh, Michigan State lost, is, is their coach now washed and they want to get Izzo? him out? Yeah. No, 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 no. You see what I'm saying, though? Like, well, he's made a Final Four. I, I know he has, but like the idea that they were supposed to win last night, though, right? No, they weren't. You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, either way, the uh, how I look at it, I, I looked at them and said they, they're getting hot at the right time. Tournament, Michigan State was really good, and they just happened to slip. So does that mean that Izzo's losing it? I don't think so. No, Izzo overachieved you ride the, You ride the wave. Well, that's I, a seven I'm correlating seed. this to, to Barnes is sure, all I'm doing. But Tennessee was a four seed. Yeah. Tennessee was never that team. And Michigan State was not even in the top 25. So did FAU get get uh, seeded as a nine because they come out of Conference USA? Yep. Okay. Conference USA, who is 14 and 14-1 in the postseason, by the way, <sighs> between the NIT and the NCAA tournament. Vanderbilt fans know about that. I'm not trolling. It's true that Vanderbilt fans know about that. They know how good the Conference USA was. Losing to UAB. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. 615-737-1045, our number. Coming up yeah. next, more of your phone calls and uh, uh, a look at a, a disappointing trend for Tennessee basketball that continued last night in March as well. That's next on our own Kalen Will, 104.5 The Zone.
Friday morning edition of Ramon Kaylin Will, and it's powered by all four seasons garage doors. Coming up at 8 o'clock, a wild extension in the NFL just announced a couple of minutes ago for a player in the NFC. We'll tell you who that is and uh, who is getting a bag through 2026. I'm talking about heavy. <laughs> With Ramon Foster, I'm Will Bowling. Kayla Anderson and Jonathan Schaefer off this morning. As we recap, Tennessee's loss to FAU last night and Ramon for the fourth time in the past five NCAA tournaments. The Vols have ended their season with a loss to a nine or lower seed. A number 11, a 12, another 11, and now a nine. Jeez. The outlier in there, of course, the third seeded Purdue Boilermakers and Carson Edwards and Ryan Klein in 2019. Uh, so I, I, I wrote down something. I meant to bring it up as I was talking earlier. Go for it. Which one would you rather have when it comes down to your Vols, though? Win the SEC tournament last year, but don't make the Sweet 16. You get the tournament championship. Or not win the tournament, and you get the Sweet 16 this year. So I've talked with this. <laughs> you feel me? I've talked with Lucas about this a lot. For last year's team, I would have preferred the SEC tournament championship. Because you hadn't won it since 1979. Yep. Now, <laughs> give me the Sweet 16 all day. Over an SEC tournament championship. Now that you've checked that box. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a fair question moving forward into this offseason and into the future of Tennessee basketball. What is a reasonable expectation now for Tennessee basketball? I'm with that. You know? Because this is kind of who they are. Yeah, it, it is. What they just did. And it, has, and it was before Rick Barnes got there, too. Make no mistake about it. I mean, the program's been a one elite eight. One, yeah. That's... And I still think we're in a good spot, though. Of course. It's a better spot than, than this program was in. Yeah, and a lot of this comes down to simply recruiting and, and just keeping guys healthy. Is the guys in there, and do they win? We don't know because, <laughs> heck, he ain't played, right? But you still say to yourself, if you can be at full strength, just health and bodies-wise, then you're a really good team. And uh, I ain't saying Zakai's the X Factor, but he's pretty doggone good, though, to be able to sustain and compete and bring those guys with him. So, uh, Vols lost, but I'd much rather have the Sweet 16 than win that SEC tournament yeah. and end up being nothing at right. the end of the day. Right. 615-737-1045 is the number this morning. We got a Lee in Nashville as we wrap up our number two this morning. What's going on, Lee? Morning, Lee. Hey, good morning, guys. Um, I mean, I have to, I have to disagree with you, Will. I mean, I think you're a prisoner of the moment, right? I think we all are. I'm, I'm class of 01, you know, so it hurt last night, but any time a Tennessee basketball team makes it to the Sweet 16, it equals overachievement because we're not a blue blood basketball program. We've, we've had some great teams way before our time in the 70s, but since you know since since the Pearl era, I mean, like you said, we only made one lead eight. This, the, the, the loss last night stung, but you, you, you take a step back and look at the entire picture. You beat Texas. You beat Kansas. You beat Alabama when they were number one. Yeah, you had some bad losses after Zakai went down. And anybody knows anybody ever played basketball, if you lose your floor general, you're not going to be the same team. And for them to man up and play the way they did, nobody gave that team a shot, including myself, in the tournament. And for them to win a couple games, one against a, a young Duke team but a good Duke team, and one against a, a tough Louisiana team, I mean, it's an overachievement for sure. Yeah. In my book. <clears throat> Yeah. Appreciate the call, Lee. Thanks. I saw with him on that. I, I don't know, though. I, I think the fact that you're not a blue blood doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, FAU is not a blue blood. They made the Elite Eight. But it's the draw that you get, though, too, from the type of player. And maybe it's the, 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 the style in which you recruit. Like, that's where I keep going. So I keep saying that word. Maybe it's the style in which the type of player you're recruiting or the area you're in or the NIL. Like, whatever it is, it just hadn't worked out and matched up for us. Well, recruiting hasn't been the problem. Well, so it's the type of player then. Sure. Okay. Uh, Julian Phillips was a five-star. It was 0 for 2 with zero points last night. Well, how much did he actually play and was a contributor this year, though, too? I mean, when he was healthy, played quite a bit. I know, but you again, that's the other part that you said at the beginning, when he was healthy. That's always been the biggest thing, I think, this year for all of the guys on this team. And it's hard to know how many of those guys were 100% or not, to be fair. Mm-hmm. I don't think Josiah Jordan James was ever 100% the entire season. Yeah. But when he I, came back from the injury, he suffered late against Vandy. I think what was simply put, FAU was the better team yesterday. Yeah, of course they were. Yeah. 
They deserve to win. They deserve to win. Absolutely. No we're, question about we're not, it. Not going to call anybody a little kid. Either. <laughs> not going to do what <laughs> John Calipari did. No, I you don't really not. take after Calipari in any way. So. I actually have to correct that a little bit myself. I do say these kids sometimes here and there, and I got to correct that because I know how that could be looked at, at at times. But it's not any disrespect, but. I get how Cal can say that. I don't know if his reason was like that, though. And you would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for you and your meddling kids. <laughs> and that little dog, too. And the little dog. Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo now. Anyway. Yeah. Rut row. Uh, coming up next, uh, hour number three of the show, Jason Swain will join us at 820. Uh, we'll continue to recap Tennessee's season and Tennessee's loss last night to FAU. Uh, NFL headlines with Jim Wyatt coming up at 920. And uh, one headline that just broke via Adam Schefter on one of the craziest contract extensions you'll see in the NFL this offseason. That's coming up next on Ramon, Kalen, and Will at halftime on the Friday morning edition of 1045 The Zone. We all know Genesis Diamonds for their diamonds, of course. Hand-picked, carefully cut, super brilliant, top quality, all that, yes. But Genesis is also well-known for their amazing rings, the mountings that showcases the diamonds. At most stores, you get the same old, same old, boring, mass-produced, generic-looking rings. But at Genesis, they carry rings from the world's top designers, exclusive designers, names like Takori and Viraggio and dozens more. These are handcrafted rings made in America. And Genesis is proud to offer the latest styles and and designs so the ring you have is a special unique not a carbon copy of your friend's rings check out their all new knife edge bands at genesis the knife edge setting looks amazing it's it's like a classic silhouette with a sharp edge that goes all around the knife edge creates the illusion of a thinner band which makes the diamond appear larger genesis has over 4,000 mountings in stock and they can also custom design something for you so while the diamond is important the overall look of the ring is just as vital so let the non-commissioned experts at genesis help you find the ring of her dreams genesis diamonds experts got expert guidance unbeatable selection highest quality and legendary value so go see them they're located in green hills and cool springs
What's going on from the Superbook.com Sports Desk? I'm Robert Wash. The Vols fell in the Sweet 16 of the Owls last night thanks to a second-half push led by Michael Forrest to upseat the four-seeded Tennessee Volunteers. 62-55 last night. Nine-seeded FAU will now play third-seeded Kansas State in the East Region Final at Madison Square Garden on Saturday. This is the Owls' first Elite Eight appearance. Some other NCAA scores from last night. Gonzaga beat UCLA 79-76. Arkansas fell to UConn 88-65, and Kansas State beat Michigan State in overtime 98-93. Also, in the NFL, Eagles are handing out a massive one-year extension to all-pro right tackle Lane Johnson. He's getting one-year $33.4 million, including $30 million guaranteed per sources Adam Schefter reports he's now under contract through 2026 and johnson has not surrendered a sack in the past two seasons despite playing last postseason when they've torn abductor for all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs visit usstn.com breaking news at once on your home for the titans and the vols this is 1045 the zone Second half of the show on the Friday morning edition. It is Ramon, Kayla, and Will. And it's powered by all four seasons garage doors. Coming up at 820, Jason Swain from Josh and Swain, the sports animal in Knoxville. Will join us. We'll recap Tennessee's loss to FAU. Take a look at what's next for this program and uh, maybe see what uh, comfort they can take in spring practice that just started this past week I mean, for the I... Orange Bowl champions. <clears throat> Alongside Ramon Foster, <laughs> Robert Walsh, our producer, filling in for Jonathan Schaefer this morning. I'm Will Bowling. The phone number, 615-737-1045. And congratulations to Lane Johnson, who just got dropped a major bag this morning. Money. A one-year extension for a guy who was previously under contract through 2025. A one-year extension worth $33.4 million. That's a lot of dollars, Ramon. That Foster. is a lot of M's right there, man. Lane Johnson has been good for a very long time. Uh, he's as consistent as almost anybody when it comes down to his play. You know, the biggest, uh, the the biggest win for his contract besides him and his family. Yep, he's a right tackle. That's correct. The right tackle floor. And I know he's a unique person because he's pro bowl and all pro and all those things. But the right tackle floor has been raised up. I'm talking about, Will, you got to go up four flights now to get to the <laughs> elevator is what we're saying. Do you hear me? Like, you, you got to go half a building now to get to the floor to go up at, at right tackles now. I think a whole new building was just built. Who? Uh, not even going up a floor. They just built a high rise. You remember in times where like only person you talked about on the offensive line was the left tackle. That's right. Now we got the right tackle making waves like this. You had Quinn uh, Nelson and, and uh, Andy. I know it's just, we ain't gonna talk about him them too much, but you got him setting resetting the market for guards. You have centers now getting big time cash too. <laughs> this makes me proud, y'all. This makes me proud as the offensive lineman myself. Now is the day that you recognize you got a good team oh. and a whole lot of good weapons, but guess what you are without offensive linemen? You're nothing. Ha! I think the Titans, Suck it. Titans learned that last year. When <laughs> yeah, they did. The backup left tackle came in for 16 games. Just got signed to a new two-year deal. Yeah, uh, uh, newly signed Dennis Daly. Yeah. Who remains an NFL player somehow. Uh, you, do you know what other what presses me also about this? This is a right tackle getting broke off like this. And the Tennessee Titans, y'all still have yet to pay Big Jeff. The more days go by, the higher of a ticker that ticket is going to be. We'll see. I think anyway. Yep. Whew. Well, Jim Wyatt will join us at 920 this morning, TennesseeTitans.com writer, and we'll get his thoughts on that and the other news and uh, the uh, headlines out of St. Thomas Sports Park this week as uh, the new free agents were introduced to the media 
for the first time. But uh, yeah, $33.4 million for a guy who has started 127 games for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I, I ain't trying to be a pocket watcher or nothing, but oh. how does that compare to the money that you were making back in the day, Moan? Because I feel like stuff like that would make me itch to get back out there. Like, nah, man, how does it? It makes me proud, honestly, because, you know, I was a union rep, too. So this is some of the stuff that we fought for. It's just like being able to spread the money out more and not just giving it to the quarterback or to the left tackle, or to the one corner, or to the outside rusher. That's where the money usually goes, right? So seeing a right tackle, seeing guards get broke off like this, to me, it makes me proud as being someone that represented this league on the union side when the union gets so much crap that I'm just like, finally, you guys are starting to get it when it comes down to, look, I'll, I'll, a quick pro tip, though, not everybody leaves the league rich. Not everybody leaves the league with money in their account either. So being able to see guys get this much – even, like I said, for a guy like him who just simply raised the floor. So another guy that may be a middle-of-the-road starter, heck, he's probably going to end up getting, and this is where I got to warn the fans as far as, like, players getting paid, he's probably, like, middle-of-the-road starters may end up getting about, at minimum, $4.5 million a year. I know a dude last year that played for Pittsburgh, played no snaps, didn't even know he was on a roster, and he brought in $3 million and was a backup. I mean, you're starting to get Chase Daniel money now if you're a starting offensive lineman. No, for real. <laughs> for real, You're getting man. overrated backup quarterback money now to play offensive line. It's, it's good, though, because nobody thinks about the OL. And the, the, what oh, I'm on my soapbox now. Screw we do it. on this show. Uh, I know we do, but, like, nobody thinks about the OL until you got an OL problem. And now we're starting to see there's other positions that deserve to be paid. Another one I'm hoping kind of transitions over or switches over is uh, – the safety position is so devalued right now. So to me, right tackle, running back, guards, and safeties are probably the lowest value when it comes down to what people think of them. 615-737-1045 this morning, and uh, the day ends in Y. So Ramon Foster gets to talk offensive line this morning. 100%. The sky baby. is blue. It is blue. Also, oh, we Sun might get rise. a little gray and black tonight. Though. It did just fit. Yeah, that's true. We did just switch from March Madness to March Sadness here in Middle Tennessee. As Tennessee was knocked out by FAU last night, 62 to 55. Uh, Rick Barnes after the game saying, I, I thought in the first half they had some shots and we dodged that. But when they started scoring, our offense wasn't very good. We gave up too many drives. And along with that, offensive rebounds where we let them get downhill. We did a better job in the second half staying down on shot fakes. That, that was one of the big reasons why FAU was able to open up um, uh, some lanes to shoot the basketball in the first half, but uh, Barnes added after the game, thought offensively we needed to continue to put pressure on them at the rim, whether it was throwing it inside or whether it was driving the ball, and we didn't do enough of that. Uh, it, we, we saw all of Tennessee's Achilles heels pop up really at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, including Uroš Polovsic just clotheslining dudes at the worst possible moment again, which was inexcusable from a guy that's played a lot of basketball for Tennessee, but I mean, essentially, this was a Tennessee team that would just revert to taking tough jump shots and taking threes yeah. when they got down. And you knew once this thing got down 10, it was going to be really hard to see Tennessee coming back to win this. It was, man. And there's no fault other than the fact that it just wasn't enough. It wasn't a whole lot to go into it uh, whenever they were seen. Their best bet was to keep their pressure on uh, FAU, and they couldn't. They moved that ball around flawlessly. It was good watching. It's fun watching basketball games when the skill shows is my I know coaching and technique shows is my like that drill work that one extra pass type of situation like get one extra pass you got a better shot and they did that well especially around the perimeter and it was very unique to watching them work simply around the perimeter most times too will they drive in FAU will, and just dish out back to the uh to the three point line and pass all around for the open shot we didn't have enough the ball was sticking for FAU in the first 10 minutes and then really in the last 30. Yeah. They, were, it were, they weren't getting trapped on one side of the floor. They were getting inside and kicking it back out. Um, I actually think Tennessee, they only were able to do that when things got really dire in the last four minutes. You started to see Jemai Meshack go to the basket. Tennessee started scoring. I mean, it, it, I, I think Jemai Meshack can come back for Tennessee next year and be a really, really good player for this team. He still reminds me of a more raw Josh Richardson Yeah. when Josh Richardson was a freshman. Not not close to the finished product of what Josh Richardson became. And, and maybe he'll never be that. It's hard to be that. Hmm. Um, 
Tennessee needs another guy with Zakai Ziegler's skills of getting inside and yeah. beating guys off the dribble. Yeah. And that was the big thing they missed last night. They didn't drive at all. They couldn't break them down, could they? Not at all. Could not break them down. Uh, of all the games where you needed Zakai Ziegler, this was the matchup where he would have helped you the most. Oh. Of all the games that you played over the course of the SEC tournament, maybe with the exception of the Missouri game where you got smaller guards that they had too where he yeah. could have helped you. But this is the kind of team that gave Tennessee fits all year. Guard-based, quick, uh, savvy veteran teams yeah. like Missouri. Uh, that's who this team really reminded me of. I know there was a lot of talk about them playing a similar style to Alabama. I thought it was similar to Alabama. I thought it was closer to Mizzou than it was Bama. I roll with you on that one, too. Yeah. 100% And will. Tennessee lost to Mizzou twice. They, they did. Uh, but, yes, I, I roll with you on that one. Uh, and, and to your point a second ago, you're, you're right. Like, there was no ability to move the ball efficiently. Right. 615-737-1045. Jason Swain coming up in 10 minutes. Uh, first, we go rapid fire on the phone lines, beginning with Ken in Nashville. What's going on, Ken? What's up, Ken? Well, I have made it all the way to Brentwood now. I started out <laughs> about out by the airport in, 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 in heavy traffic. Oh. Appreciate you hanging on with us. We do not yes, care. <laughs> no, yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Excellent job. Y'all Thanks. doing an excellent job. Thanks, Ken. Uh, I just want to say something about I'm taking the opposite approach. Uh, I've been a Tennessee basketball fan since the days of Bernard King and Ernie Runfell. So I've been, I've been a basketball fan of the balls for a long time. Uh, he, he seems to uh, recruit well. And I don't know if he's recruiting the right positions or at the right time or whatever, but it, it's not panning out on the court because, you know, he, he's had enough talent there to, to, to get to it when, at least one final four, in my opinion. And, and he's getting paid very well as well. I mean, he's probably about the fourth highest paid coach, but yeah. that, that's neither here nor there. He, he's a skilled, very excellent basketball coach. But the bottom line is, you know, these teams with the guards that are good, uh, and, you know, we ought to be able to beat them every now and then. We beat teams this year that, um, you know, we probably shouldn't have beat, which is great. Uh, the Kansases of the world and, and, and teams like that. But we also lost to teams we had no business losing to. And I don't know if UAB was one. I mean, um, if Florida, a, um, you know, Florida Atlantic. But, uh, you know, uh, the bottom line is they seem to um, – th- th- last night, the Santiago Vesco, he was hitting the threes, and he stopped – they just stopped scoring at times. They just – it's like they ought to think of scoring as a heartbeat. Right. You cannot allow your heart to yeah. stop. <laughs> Just keep scoring, you know, and, and, and their shooting percentage is, is, is horrible sometimes. So right. other than that, I love the balls. Oh, Thank God. you very much. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate that's, the call. That's fair. Uh, let's go quickly to uh, Jason in Murfreesboro before we get to uh, Jason Swain coming up on the other side. Wrap it up uh, the start of hour three here. What's going on, Jason? Hey, guys. Man, I am so frustrated with Rick Barnes right now. Y'all had the game in the first half. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't Florida Atlantic playing better than us. It was simply, uh, I think, bad coaching on Rick Barnes this time. Like, I forgot the guy's name. I think it's – I forgot how you say his last name. The Ma, uh, the Makamua or – Kamwa. 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 The Kamwa. He cannot shoot. When you, when you have a person who's going that cold in the game – Hey, tell him, just play your defense, and we'll have somebody else shoot the rock. Like uh, James, I think James and Escobie, they're the ones that they're the ones that should have been shooting the shot. When, you, when you're scoring that cold to make, like, what, two points the whole game? You, you've got to stop shooting, man. You've got to, he has to recognize that immediately. But, hey, man, you, you just ain't on, you ain't on it today, so stop, stop wasting the shot. Because every time he shoot it, man, it was like, he was like, what, one for – I don't know how many how many field goals he had. Tomwell was two of nine, made, after being ten of thirteen like, against Duke. If he made it all of those, we would have won the game. Well, you know it, what I'm saying? Like you got you got to know when to stop. Thanks, Jason. We we got to keep it moving today. But um, I mean, I, I don't know who else who else you got to go to. I mean, Tyreek Key in this game. If you want to go to him instead, okay, he was uh, two of nine also. That was a little confusing to me because he said fire Rick Barnes where he didn't like Rick Barnes' job, but then he blamed the players. Like, which one was it on that one? Yeah, if you want other guys to shoot, Josiah Jordan-James is 3 of 11. Shoot or shoot. Vescovy right. was 3 of 11. Uh, Jonas Adu was 4 of 5. Okay. A lot of those were in garbage time when this game was pretty much already decided. 
really late with like two minutes left. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I think this one you was just off. It, we a little bit of contradicting statements there from uh, from Jason. But Jason Swain will join us, and he'll give us uh, some different statements coming up uh, in just a couple of minutes. His thoughts on where this Tennessee program goes next, how he'll remember this specific Tennessee basketball team, and uh, uh, the big question mark coming out of the locker room last night that we'll address, Julian Phillips potentially going to the NBA. After 0 of 2 shooting and no points last night, maybe his final act as a Tennessee volunteer. We'll ask Jason Swain about that and uh, much more coming up next on Amon, Kayla, and Will, 104.5 The Zone. I'm going to take you back to the 80s for a minute. 1983 to be exact, when Michael Jackson was topping the charts, parachute pants were in style, and when people were listening to music on cassettes. 1983, the year that Two Rivers 4 was born. Well, it's their 40th anniversary, and as a local business right here in Middle Tennessee, that is huge. And I'll tell you this, Two Rivers 4 has always been a big part of our community. They've been a big part of 104.5 The Zone, a big part of local sports, and a big part of local charities. Two Rivers 4 always steps up to do whatever this community needs. Now, listen, if you're from Nashville, you know this already. But if you're new to town, I'm going to tell you what Two Rivers 4 is all about. They've been doing business with honesty and integrity for 40 years. What you see is what you get. They're transparent and upfront, and they have non-commissioned salespeople, so they never press you into buying anything. They always have great prices. They always sell below MSRP on their non-specialty new Fords, and they make cart buying easy. Whether you're ordering a vehicle, shopping on the lot or shopping online. They do business however you, yes, you want to do business. Two River 4 has asked me to make sure to say thank you to all of their customers and this community for 40 great years and for more to come. I promise you that. Two Rivers 4, powered by Ford, driven by people.
It's about Kayla and Will, powered by all four seasons, garage doors on 104.5 The Zone, Friday morning edition with Ramon Foster. I'm Will Bowling. Robert Walsh making the show happen this morning, filling in for Jonathan Schaefer. Kayla Anderson, a very well-deserved day off today as well, meaning she doesn't have to deal with uh, me and Ramon. Mm-hmm. I think that I think they'll be happy it. with that. No, they got to be worse. <laughs> I feel like, hey, listen, yeah. man, we're good. Oh, we're great. We're cool. We've had a good morning. Sun is shining. We live in Nashville. We live in Nashville. The nation. Well, we go to the Mark Spain Real Estate Hotline. Check in with one of our favorites, Jason Swain from Sports Animal in Knoxville. Good morning, Swain. Can you confirm that the sun also came up in Knoxville this morning? <laughs> uh, let me see here. Yep, it's up. Perfect. Perfect. It's up. Uh, man, tough night for Tennessee against FAU, Swain. What, what was the biggest thing you took away from last night's loss? Tennessee getting out rebounded. Um, Tennessee, I mean, rebounding is all about effort. I mean, it's about toughness. And Tennessee prides itself on being being tough all season long. They pride themselves playing with maximum effort. And FAU wanted it more. FAU went after rebounds. And don't get me wrong, when you have a team shoot three point shots, it is more difficult for the defense to get those long offensive rebounds. But my goodness, I mean, not all of those opportunities were, were long rebounds. Uh, FAU got 50 50 balls. Mm-hmm. Um, I just didn't think we would go out like that. I thought we would go out a little bit, um, you know, a little bit better, clawing, scratching, fighting to, to go out. And just seemed like the FAU went on that run, uh, we were really unable to to respond. Um, really disappointed and, and you know, with all the talk about Tennessee's dirty play leading up to the game, you know, that we still had a play where we get called for a flagrant one foul. I mean, why would you try to prove – why would you prove everybody right in that situation uh, in that moment where points are really hard to come by? So I just I – mean, you, you saw mental lapses. You saw SAU out hustling Tennessee for rebounds and 50 balls. Uh, it was disappointing for sure, but – it was it was a really good season. I mean, getting to the Sweet 16 is hard. It is very, very difficult. Uh, and Tennessee was able to achieve that without the guy Ziegler. Uh, it was up and down season as far as injuries and uh, losing the teams that you were inferior to. Had a couple of buzzer beater losses. But you had some really great moments. Beating Alabama, beating Texas. Um, you can't take those moments away from this, this basketball team. Jason Swain, our guest this morning on Ramon, Kalen, Will. Uh, Swain, why do you think Tennessee couldn't out-rebound FAU? With all the conversation about Tennessee's length and FAU's lack of size, uh, who's the most to blame for that from Tennessee's perspective? I mean, I think it's a, a collective effort. You know, I don't think blame goes around. I mean, some of those balls, I mean, those, those are tough. And I've heard Rick Barnes, you know, excuse his team sometimes on a long three-ball uh, rebound because those are really difficult, but not all of those rebounds were that. So you blame everybody. I mean, you don't get to this stage of the game where if you don't handle business, you're pointing a finger. I mean, this team is close together. Uh, they, they take accountability. Uh, they do it as a team, and they they won as a team during the season. They lost as a team during the season, but last night they lost as a team, and they all failed to take care of business. Simple as that. You can't have Olivier out there with less than 10 points after dropping 27 points against Duke. No Z in the lineup. This team knew that it needed their their seniors to step up. And quite frankly, the seniors did not do that. The seniors, um, I think, in part, was a big reason why this team failed to reach the Elite Eight. That's fair. Swain, before we go more basketball, man, is it fresh Jordan Friday or what today? (laughs) Now I'm looking down at my shoes. They are not fresh, and they are not short. Ah. <laughs> I just set my game up, Ramon. <laughs> Dad, I just set my game up, Ramon. Dad life got my dog, man. Come on, Swizzy. Ah. No, 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 no. They, they, hey, they're Vapor Max, okay. and they're Tennessee Orange That's and Gray. Point. So I'm still in the spirit, even though last night, that was a gut punch. I'm still all orange, my man. Well, well, guess what I'll put on today, okay? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you're watching our video stream, but Ramon is literally wearing a Tennessee baseball jersey right now and walked into the hey, studio, Ramon. looks at me this morning and goes, well, we're on to the next one, buddy. 
<laughs> My goodness, Ramon, he flipped the switch quick. <laughs> real quick. And I mean real quick. All right, Swizzy. You, hey, short memory when you play offensive line. Gave up a sack on one play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 tell you got to go win, man, because Ramon will walk in the next day with a football nerd if you ain't careful. That's <laughs> all I'm telling you. As long as it's orange, we good, okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, wow. I know, man, I'm here for a good time, y'all. But, Swizzy. The first half and second half of that game against FAU, dog, was that first half as good as we were going to get and we just couldn't hold on because it, it couldn't have went any better for the Vols in the first half, defending the perimeter, uh, get, being able to get shots. Like, is that what it was? Because people are going to say Barnes didn't adjust, but, heck, that was the plan, I think, and did they just slip out of, the, out of their hands? No, man, I, I, I don't necessarily see it that way, Mon. I Okay. Was- I mean, I was, I was over here biting my nails, man. I was nervous at halftime because <clears throat> I feel like Tennessee should have been up a whole lot more right. because FAU had a ton of open looks, and they missed it. I was like, dude, how much longer are these guys going to miss open looks? You look at how they played their first game against Memphis, they were 29% from three. Their second game against FDU, they were 29% from three. And in the first half, they were missing shots. I was like, oh, man. At some point, they're going to make some of these open shots. And the fact that we were only up by a couple points, it really had me nervous. Well, they come back in the second half. Uh, they move the defense. They are sharing the basketball. They're getting those open looks. The difference between the first half and the second half, Bone, they start making them. <laughs> they start making them, man. And I think that was, that was what got us in, in, in big trouble on top of the rebounds. I mean, the best time to shoot a three is off the offensive rebound. Yeah. And they had a couple shots where they got the rebound, out hustled us, and put the ball up and then went through. Um, that was that was what scared me at halftime, Mom. I was and I was glad to be up, but I thought we should have been up at least by double figures. Yeah, I, I feel you on that, but I also was looking at it as like what well, this is our style of ball. And then I felt like they took us out of our style of ball in the second half offensively when and when the commentator said, I forget which one of them it was, it said, that's been Tennessee problem since the Kai's gone out, their ability to, to control the ball at the point guard position. That's when I thought it slipped for us, Wayne. I thought the plan was actually pretty good up to that point. Yeah, I think it's just really easy to point the finger at, at coaches. I mean, I don't I do not do that, man. I look at the players first yeah. and their ability to execute. Uh, I'm sure you do the same thing as a foreign player yourself and understand mm-hmm. that the only thing a coach can do is put the food – on the table for you. They can't make you eat. You got to do that yourself. And so 